Welcome to the Weather Forecast, the week beginning Wednesday, June 17th, 2020. I'm Chief Meteorologist John Unsworth for the Longmont Public Media, and my computer's back, so I'm back on the right side of your screen. Saturday, we are almost to new moon this month, with only 2% of the moon visible, and the moon is up in the sky for almost 14 hours because the sun is. It's very close to the sun. These are the longest days, shortest nights of the year. All right, a big picture can be seen in the water vapor satellite image. And if you're new to these videos, the whites and the gray colors are parts of the atmosphere where there is more moisture. We see the purples and blues, there's even more moisture and often ice cloud tops and some uh, good lift there. The reds and the orange colors are dry between the top of the atmosphere, at least the top of the troposphere the lowest layer of the atmosphere, down to the surface. You can see this big swooping pattern in the west. This is our trough that's going to change your weather very remarkably this week. This is going to look a lot like our last big storm. You can see the flow goes up and into Canada and on. There's this persistent cutoff low over the uh, mid-Atlantic states. It's giving them unusually cool, wet weather, and I think they're really liking that because normally it gets really hot and humid this time of year. A little low up here associated with all this cloudiness and high icy clouds. That same pattern is visible just about 12 hours later with the low up here, another low forming down here. There's our trough in the west, a little bit of ridge here. There's our cutoff low in the mid Atlantic. And the airflow is coming out of the northwest and then up across Colorado from the southwest giving us pretty substantial heat. And I just noticed that my letters are cut off over there on Tuesday, so sorry about that. For Wednesday noon, as that trough comes closer, we see some snow in the higher mountains of Idaho and Montana, Wyoming, and some rain lower elevations, and a cold front up ahead of it, with precipitation lagging behind the front. The big picture for the next 10 days shows this cool front coming in. Look at that tremendous drop from record and near record heat for Tuesday, Wednesday, dropping to really low uh, temperatures for Thursday, Friday. Notice the nighttime temperatures don't go below normal, even though the daytime highs are. That's due to the cloud cover and moisture they'll be moving in. That moisture can be seen here as two distinct afternoon mainly, uh, bands of precipitation, some thunderstorms and like that. The model is actually seeing snow in a couple of runs here. I don't think so. Our normal low temperatures are in the upper 40s climbing to the low 50s. Normal high temperatures are in the low 80s and climbing up a little bit over the next 10 days. Beyond this cool front and stormy period, you can see the temperatures actually stay warm but within normal bounds for the rest of this period. And showers, scattered afternoon showers, return in the later period. For Thursday a.m., this cold front is now pressed down past the state. We have a little low down here helping funnel some moisture up over the front. Lots of moisture in the northern Rockies. And what's happening Friday noon is this trough is moving in closer. It's actually a little bit of a cutoff circulation right here. That's the a little pool of cold air that will be moving over the state. That will drop our temperatures down even further on Friday with an overall trough stretching from the low up in Canada all the way down off the uh, California coast. Little ridges and troughs over here. The east coast low is finally getting pulled into the jet stream flow and getting taken away by this. So for this rain that we're going to have Wednesday and Thursday, we need moisture and we have it. This map is precipitatable water. This is the amount of water that you can get out of the atmosphere in an ideal situation, like a perfect thunderstorm going off. The darker greens are more available moisture and the brown colors are less available moisture, drier atmosphere. And it's a pretty thin ribbon coming from the western Gulf of Mexico up into Mexico, Texas, 
A lot of it's just flowing up across the Great Plains, but a little bit is getting sucked by that low. Here's a low in, uh, at this point down in New Mexico, sucked over into the eastern plains and up against the mountains. That's all we need is a little easterly, southeasterly, northeasterly flow, a little bit of moisture coming uphill, and you can get rain. You can see that the chance of convection matches that Y shape uh, with the main ribbon of moisture going up across the Great Plains and a little bit being sucked up into the Rockies and some moisture that's also being pulled in on shore in the northern Rockies. It's almost the same pattern for Thursday. No severe weather at this point is predicted by the Storm Prediction Center for Thursday or for the next three days. By Friday afternoon, our fetch of moisture is a little deeper. You can see it's, a, it's broader across Texas. Definitely more moisture in place in, this, in Colorado, Nebraska, even a little bit of Wyoming. A good ribbon being drawn up into the Great Lakes. So that's the fuel for our Friday storms. How much precipitation will we get over the next five days? This is more reliable than the 10 day, which we'll look at in just a moment, but these are mostly convective situations. So thunderstorms are popping up fairly randomly. Some are triggered by mountains, some are triggered by outflow from earlier thunderstorms. So it's a little chaotic. And so what the model sees each time is going to be a little different. So don't put all the money that you have on to the fact that there's going to be an inch of rain down here east of Longmont or just a half inch to three quarters of an inch in Longmont. This just kind of shows you how spaced apart the heavier precipitation regions might be because here's an inch to inch and a quarter up in the mountains and the foothills above uh, Longmont, Lyons, like that. Over the next 10 days, it increases a little bit more, maybe a touch more moisture around here. Mountains get a little bit more, Palmer Divide gets a little more, out here in Kansas gets a little more uh, precipitation, but it's not a lot. Another big part of the news story is the haze and the smoke coming into the state right now. We have fires near Tucson, central Arizona, up in the north rim of the Grand Canyon, and down in the Four Corners area in southwestern Colorado. And these fires start kind of quiet in the morning as the daytime heats up. Uh, the relative midi, which is the amount of moisture in the air divided by the maximum amount of moisture that can be supported at that temperature, uh, times 100 gives you a percent relative humidity every day in the afternoon as the daytime heats up as the Sun warms up the land the relative humidity drops and that helps these uh, fires kick up more so for Tuesday evening you can see they've calmed down a little bit and then Wednesday morning you can see they're picking up again and you can see quite a plume coming from there, and a big plume coming from central Arizona up towards us, and lost in there is the Colorado plume. But that's a lot of smoke for Wednesday. Then the cold front pushes down, and for Thursday noon, you can see that we're getting a lot of that cleared out and pushed down. Um, <clears throat> the fires are also quieter uh, in this frame, so they're not pumping out quite as much smoke. I don't know how if these models taking into account a rate of fire containment expected and things like that. It might be that moisture is going to be increasing over Arizona as well, making the fires uh, a little naturally suppressed. Not sure. After our cool down for Thursday and Friday, and you know, the weekend will be dry, but only in the 80s, we do get this ridge back in the western uh, states for Monday. And so the heat will come back. We'll see 90s come back. Our trough is kind of disorganized, moving out across the Great Plains at this point. Let's take a look at the next seven days. Still a lot of heat for Wednesday and sunny skies. For Thursday and Friday, we drop dramatically, 20 degrees or more into the 70s and then upper 60s. And 40s at night with thunderstorm chances pretty good. We should see some uh, nice soaking rain if you call a half inch soaking for the weekend we're mid to upper 80s and just partly cloudy next week 
we see some moisture come back, heat come back, now it kick off a few wandering afternoon thunderstorms. At this point, it does not look like a big uh, change in the weather, obviously a lot hotter. Uh, these will be the things that form in the in mountains and then move on out, hit someone there and other subdivisions, not at all. For more local news, take a look at the Longmont Leader, formerly the Longmont Observer at longmontleader.com, and you'll see more frequent weather updates. Uh, sometimes I'll even do updates in the middle of updates to keep up with watches, warnings, or any breaking news in the weather. So this has been the weather forecast for the week beginning Wednesday, June 17th. I'm Chief Meteorologist John Ensworth. Keep looking up.